Rishalama Gandara Babasai. We surrender, Lord, we surrender, Lord. Oh, that we may be at the center of your will, Jehovah. In everything that pertains us, O oh God. In the works that we are doing, Jehovah. In the calling that you have called us, dear Father. Even as we continue to serve your purposes in our generations, dear Lord. We don't want to do it our way, O oh God. We surrender to your will, dear Father. We surrender to your will tonight, Jehovah. We surrender to your will, Jehovah. We surrender to your will, King of all glory. I pray for everyone who is logged in tonight. And I pray in the name of Jesus that your will will be done concerning us, Lord. Your will will be done concerning our families, O oh God. Your will will be done concerning our ministries, our oh calling, Jehovah God. All oh, that purpose you had from the beginning, dear Lord. Oh, for you knew us, Lord, even before we were conceived in our mother's womb. You appointed us, you set us apart, Jehovah. My my God and my Father, this is our cry tonight. Let us be at the center of your will. We cast away every other thing that contends with your will in our lives. We cast away every competition, every compromise, Lord, that has hindered your will in our lives. And this is our desire tonight. This is our prayer tonight, O oh God. This is our prayer tonight, Jehovah, that you may position us, Lord, at the center of your will, dear Lord. That everything that will happen in our lives from now on, it will all happen together for good, Jehovah. Because in your hands, Lord, in your will, dear Father, we surrender our lives, O oh God. We surrender our lives, O oh God. We surrender our lives, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, O oh Lord. We give you praise, everlasting Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for who you are, oh God. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives tonight. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you all who have logged in tonight. This is Glorious Power Church Tuesday Prayer Line Conference. We meet here every Tuesday from 9 p.m to 10 p.m. and uh, we thank God for such a powerful time of intercession where we've been able to stand in the gap and seek the Lord. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. If there is a, a weapon we have been given, if there is something we've been given that we ought to use more and more is prayer. We need to continue praying because when we pray, our God hears and he answers. And we are witnesses of the miraculous happenings that have happened to answers to our prayers in Jesus' name. I just want to open the lines now. If you're there and you'd like to say something, maybe you have a praise report. Maybe you've just joined us for the first time or you have a... Uh, an encouraging word before we hear the word of God. I'm just going to open the line and we can hear from one or two people. Anyone who is not on mute. All right. I understand that most of us log in when we are working or we are in a place where we cannot say something. We log in, but we are on mute. I can see you are all here and I'm encouraged by that. And but this moment, I'm going to welcome our Bishop, Apostle Peter Chacha. Uh, he is going to lead us in the word and also in the next part of prayer. And the Lord is going to bless us. Welcome, Bishop. Wonderful session of prayer that we 
we just had and uh, that's a blessing we thank god for it and um, for everyone who is tuned in tonight god bless you so much uh, i appreciate for what god is doing in your lives uh, i'm grateful because he's been faithful to me too even in my trips here in the u.s and uh, i bless god tonight and i know his glory is shining in our lives and uh, so we always thank god because of his goodness and every time we believe that he has good plans for us and his plans are always uh, wonderful they are always good they are always to bless us and to make us who we are supposed to be and you know sometimes prayer people don't realize how important prayer is until sometimes they have they reach the end of everything else they realize that only prayer can really bring a solution or a transformation in their lives and sometimes i believe that it is good and always something very powerful we may be able to learn more on how we can be powerful you know i've been you know in the whole world today everywhere you go you know, be it in the, in the U.S., be it in Kenya or any other country, everywhere, things are getting really different. You know, the the things, uh, life is becoming so tight and many things are happening. But, you know, at the same time, God is already also doing something and positioning his church for the sake of the end time. The end time is here with us. People don't realize Many things are changing. Everywhere you go, people talk to you and say, you know, you know, people are different today. I believe this is, um, you know, uh, you know, things are happening. People don't do this. And, you know, the activities of the enemy are too many. And uh, many things look like they are not happening in the best way. But at the same time, the God, God is preparing a powerful church, a powerful people. <clears throat> who he is positioning for the sake of what he is planning to do. And one of the greatest uh, weapons or the greatest uh, uh, thing that can help a Christian uh, to be in the best place or in the best position to conquer in this world. There are many things that are happening, negative things, that are coming against the people of God, people everywhere, be it financial, spiritual, you know, sicknesses, attacks of any kind, persecution, you know, uh, and sometimes you don't realize it until you realize, you see how people are not really comfortable to talk about Jesus, you know, comfortable to say they are born again because everywhere sometimes you go, people tell you you are trying to be, you know, you're trying to force your religion onto them. But it's also part of persecution of sometimes where you feel that things are not happening. So there is one thing I want to share with us tonight, <clears throat> because this is, a, a, you know, important to us. We need to see how <clears throat> we can believe God in our prayer. You know, believe in God in your prayer, because this is very, very important. Because when we pray, we have to know that God answers, or not only um, that uh, does God answer, but he hears when we pray, <clears throat> when we speak, when we, you know, we declare things before his presence, God hears our prayer. Now, you know, I, I one time I was, uh, you know, trying to think about prayer, and I realized there are three levels of prayer, three levels of prayer, not types levels you can operate in prayer and uh, I, I just want to mention that and then we can uh, just uh, read the uh, scripture and uh, see what God is going to do the level number one of prayer and this is where because many Christians pray and they end up in this level in their prayer life is the prayer of asking the level of asking where we just know that we need a, we have a need, <clears throat> we have a desire, we have a cry in our heart. There is something happening in us, and we know Jesus said, ask and receive, 
that your joy may be complete. And you know, we always say no from the word of God that Jesus said, ask, uh, whoever asks receives, and whoever knocks the door is open. So we know that uh, Jesus actually gave us the command or uh, the advice that we should always learn to ask. And But one thing you have to realize, that when we ask, Jesus did not say that when you go to prayer, you just ask God and that's all. So, but you know, that is the, the beginning of prayer. That is, you know, it, it's not even a fellowship. It's just, uh, I call it the, the, uh, the grade one or the nursery uh, level of prayer where you just go before God and ask and when things don't happen, you go back to God and say, God, I ask you, why is it not happening? You know, someone said one time that uh, it is good to stand in the Word of God, and the lady was listening to his preaching, and he went and took the Bible and stood on it and began to say, you know, and the Bible says when you stand in the Word, you know, you should stand in the Word. The preacher told us that we should stand on the Word, and he, he stood on the Word, and she stood on the Word and the Bible, and she jumped there and, and believing that a God will answer her now that she's standing on the Bible. And then after some time, she went back to the preacher, and she said, Mr. Preacher, sir, you told us that if we stand on the Word, we will always receive. And I stood on the Word. It never worked. So he, he, he asked her, can you explain how you stood on the Word? And she said, you know, I went to my Bible. They put it down and stood on it and rebuked everything, and I said, I'm standing on the word. So she could not understand how, even though she obeyed and took the word and stood on it, and, you know, according to her understanding. But standing on the word is just simply agreeing with what the word of God says. When God speaks something, you have to believe it. When you believe it, you have to confess it. You have to cooperate. Many a times we read the word and it doesn't make sense. The word sometimes doesn't make sense, especially if you are a medical person and you know what medicine does and you know when a disease or a sickness is diagnosed and, you know, everybody knows this is the way to go. And somebody comes to you and tells you the Bible says, as you go, these signs shall follow them that believe. And in my name, they shall cast out devils, they shall drink any deadly thing, or uh, take up serpents and uh, drink any deadly thing, and it shall not hurt them. And the Bible says, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So you say, w so what do you apply on the hands? Somebody came to me one time and for prayer, and uh, she, she, she told me, you know, I want you to lay hands on me. And I say, okay, why do you want me to lay hands on you? She said, the Bible says that I'll be, uh, you lay hands on the sick and they recover. So I said, that's good. And do you believe that Jesus is going to heal you? She said, yes, I have something here. And so she took out some oil and, uh, you know, she said, take the oil, uh, you know, apply it in your hand so you lay hands on me. I said, why do you think that I, and she said, you, yeah, you should pray with the oil and make sure that I'll be healed. The Bible says, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So she could not believe or understand that you can just lay hands by faith and the power of God goes through someone and somebody is healed or ministered. She believed that there must be something that you should use, something tangible. Like if it is not medicine you, you take, you have to use some medicine, you can wrap something. That's when they believe. But it, it's so simple. So when we ask God, and sometimes you realize there are many things, and every one of us has asked God for one thing or another at one point or many times. I have prayer requests that have not yet been answered, even me. I know there are people also listening to me that have prayer requests that they have presented before God and they, it never worked or, or something has not happened. Does it mean God really doesn't under, answer prayer because, you know, there is a preacher who taught me, uh, you know, he taught us that, you know, God has three answers. Uh, sometimes he may say no. Sometimes he may say wait. Sometimes he may say yes. And I believed it. 
So every time I pray <clears throat> and nothing happens, and sometimes I say, maybe God says no. But the truth is, even when we say God said no, he never said to us. So we are just imagining God said no. So we are answering for God. So there is something I came to realize that it is also good if you ask anything from God, if you trust him to, to do something, it is not for your part to answer for him. The word of God does not say God has three answers. This is a religious view of people, how they come, they try to make it look simple so that they don't, they don't, they don't think why can prayer not be answered. Because you see, sometimes we don't realize that in, in prayer, for every answer that we expect, we also have some responsibility. God has his promises, but every person that goes to God has a responsibility. What does the Bible say? That without faith, it is impossible to believe God, to please God. But the Bible says that those who come to him should first believe that God exists. That is a responsibility. That's taking responsibility so that when you are going before God, number one, you have to believe that He He is there. He is existing. He's 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 alive. He's He's there, you know, because that is actually in in, in, in Hebrews chapter eleven verse uh, verse six. But without faith it is impossible to please God, to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So he must first believe that God is there. You know, sometimes when you are still arguing whether God exists or he doesn't exist, so the best thing you should do is deal with that existence first. Be sure that God exists. Number two, the responsibility that we have is that this person also should believe that he is a rewarder, that he answers, that when you seek him, he responds. It is your choice. It is, it is a responsibility that you take. It is a choice that you make and believe that it take a responsibility. So that's why the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. To please him. So in other words, you may be prayerful. You may be praying. You may be seeking God. But do you really believe that He is existing? Number two, do you believe that He is even answering your prayer? Because you see, if you know that God will answer your prayer and you believe it, because there is always a voice which will come after you have prayed and tell you, you know what, the prayer that you make is not going to be answered. Unless you call for a great preacher who can come and pray for you until, you know, you fall down and, you know, shout hallelujah and speak in tongues. But you see, sometimes what it takes is a simple belief, agreeing with the word of God. So in, the, in this level of asking and receiving, we have to realize that when we go before God, we ask by faith, <clears throat> and faith is a, is a journey. It's not something, it's not an event. It's not something that happens. It is something that you take and believe, take it through. Now, when you ask, many times we know, there are prayer we ask, there are things we ask God, and He answers immediately. But there are other things we may pray, and sometimes the answer delays. Like when I got born again, many times I go, I would go to God and threaten Him and say, God, if you don't give me this <clears throat> within seven days, I'll backslide. And I was serious. I was a baby Christian. And many times uh, God always came through for me. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, even within three days, I would receive a miracle. Sometimes I'll say, I'm, I'm feeling some pain in my stomach. And I say, God, if you don't heal me in seven days, you know, I'll go back to where I came from. You know, and miracles will happen. Many times I would wonder why is it that people who have been in, in the Lord for many years, they pray for long and nothing is happening. I was wondering. So I thought I was a superstar in prayer. Until one day I was just kneeling down, <clears throat> praying and threatening God uh, as usual because I thought that's the way to pray. And the Lord rebuked me. He told me something that has always stuck in my mind and my heart. When will you ever grow? <clears throat> When will you mature? Because, you know, a baby Christian <clears throat> is like a small child. When you have a baby who is one day old, the people stay up all the night and the baby sleeps. When the baby wakes up, everybody stays up. You can't sleep because you can't do anything. So you keep watch over the baby. 
the baby doesn't even know he, he you know, he's not even worried because he doesn't even know he's supposed to worry. <clears throat> when the baby begins to talk, you know, sometimes you you pinch him or her a little bit. Why are you doing this? You try to, you know, you rebuke her. And, you know, as, as people grow, <clears throat> when they become of age, you don't sometimes they cry and you say, can you go to your room? They say, oh, you say, okay, go to your room. And they go stay there because you know they should be growing. The same way in the spiritual world, we have also to keep growing. But <clears throat> so when God is rebuked me, he made me understand that there are times that a God only overlooks what is happening and he takes your position. But God has given us the power and authority to stay <clears throat> in the presence of God. So when there is a level you reach where you fight for your rights, you fight for your things, you fight for the miracle, and the enemy will begin grow, uh, attacking your life and sometimes trying to make sure that you don't continue believing. That's why faith is something that grows in us. <clears throat> that if we cannot really pursue it, we may believe God for a moment and lose hope on the way. And many times people tend to lose hope or faith when they are about to receive a miracle or when the breakthrough is coming. And that's why the next level of your prayer life is that you should learn what we call spiritual warfare. Learn to fight and deal with the powers of darkness because God answers prayer. But what hinders prayer is the power of darkness. The devil hates to see you successful. The devil hates to see you healthy. The devil hates to see you prosperous. The devil hates to see your marriage doing well. The devil hates to see your children going all, uh, doing well in school, staying healthy, serving the Lord. The devil hates it. God desires that you may have all the things that you desire. But the devil hates to see your success. And that's why you have to realize and develop yourself as a Christian and grow in faith so that you reach a place where you know when the enemy comes. Well, you know, every time, even now, when we, like in the United States, you discover there is peace in the country and the government takes care of everybody. But you know, when things begin to happen in your neighborhood, you don't, sometimes you may not be able to have everybody help you. Sometimes you may have to deal with it. And that's why the Bible says we do not rest against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. That means we do not, we deal with spiritual beings. You should know that there are spirits, there are demons in the, in the ranks and levels that are always trying to intimidate your life. The number one level of demon, the highest, the master demon, is a principality, is a territorial spirit, tries to rule the area so that you don't succeed. That's why you can go to a place where people will tell you, this place people try to begin businesses, they always die. This place, people don't go beyond this time. I went to, I remember one time in Kenya, we went to, to minister in a village. And this village, it, has, it had no, you know, the people had died, almost the whole village had no elderly people, only the very old and the children. And the spirit had just come over that land, the demon of death. People are dying, if it is not HIV, it is a disease or a witchcraft or whatever, but people are dying young, young, young. And you know, such a time you don't blame people, you blame the devil and you deal with that devil. And that's why we, you see these evil spirits and territorial spirits, they will try to hinder your success. You try to make money, you try to work hard, and the things come on, and sometimes the debts, and sometimes the issues come up, they try to frustrate your finances. And that's why you have to learn, even beyond asking, you should go to a level and tell the devil, get off my way. You will have the powers. You know, these, you know, are spirits that rules in, you know, they, they, they come into areas of your life. They try to rule in education sides, you know, you know financial, uh, different areas. 
they there are powers that are rules and oppress through different areas or departments. You know the devil is organized and he's he knows how to operate. He does not just attack like you know, sometimes we think the devil is confused. No, he's not confused. He's so he's so organized. We have to be organized ourselves as Christians. He tries to confuse us because he knows if we are organized, we will always defeat him. And that's why we have to stand and fight him all the time. You know, and the, the rulers of the darkness of this age, these are spirits that come and rule through men or people who are in authority. They will target people. They will target people as the best orator. They will target the best musician. They will target the, the best leader. They will target people. That's why somebody can be a leader. The Bible says when the righteous are in authority, people rejoice. Why? Because they have the Spirit of God and they allow God to rule through them. And, you know, that is something. And, you know, there is a spiritual weakness in the heavenly places. These are demons, you know, they are the ones that are executed. They are like the police, the soldiers. They are the ones who are sent. Go and execute this. They come with, you know, attacks of particular things, discouragement. Sometimes you just feel like discouraged, and that's why people end up, you know, sometimes committing suicide or quitting their jobs and, you know, getting frustrated and getting depressed because people reach a place they feel their lives have no meaning. Listen to every one of you listening to me tonight. I want to tell you something, that it is good to understand that even though we pray, we are also in a warfare. And this is real. The enemy intends and desires to make sure that you don't even become what God wants you to become. But in the name of Jesus tonight, we want to contend for our future. Contend for your children. Contend for your business. Contend for your career. Contend for your family. Sometimes people give us give up quickly. They say, I don't care. I don't want to stay. I don't want to do this. I don't want to work up. But it is good to contend for your life. Contend about it. Stand. And the good thing is the Bible says that Jesus told his disciples when he sent them to preach. And they came back and they were giving him a report. And they said, Jesus, even demons, you know, they bowed. They obeyed us when we, we, we spoke in your name. They obeyed us in your name. And he said, I give you power and authority against to trample on serpents, to trample on scorpions, and to trample on all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, use that word sometimes. That is in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Use that word sometimes and tell the devil, you cannot hurt me. You will not hurt my children. Stand, contend, sometimes rebuke, sometimes be, be violent in the spirit. You know, don't even attack people. Attack the, de the demonic world. Frustrate those powers and let the demons understand that you are there and you must succeed and nothing will hinder your success. Let them understand. That's why sometimes prayer is a level. You have to go beyond that. Just asking God, do this God and blaming him when it, nothing happens. Remember you have an enemy who is the devil. And that devil must be bound in Jesus' name must be attacked in Jesus. Jesus said, you cannot enter the house of a strong man unless you bind him. It is good. To bind means to hinder. Is to encage, to cage the enemy, to put him in a cage, to draw a line and say, you can't go beyond here. I bind you in the name of, I hinder you. In other words, I stop you from operating or manifesting in my life. And this is what I want you to do every time. And this is the life of a Christian. Learn to contend. Don't give up in your life. Don't give up in your marriage. Don't give up in your career. Don't give up in your education. Don't give up in seeking to know the will. If you have a you had a vision of building the best house or buying a good house or buying the best car or education higher or going to levels that you ever desired to be, listen tonight. Don't give up. Because God is on your side. Contend for your vision. Contend for your future. Contend for your health. Sometimes we have to fight until we get healed. We have to fight until we are, we are free from every oppression of the enemy. Because the enemy's intention is to frustrate us. We have to contend. So tonight we are going to contend in Jesus' name. Yes. And it calls our lives to be very graciously successful because that is the 
the intention of God. We have to contend for our lives. And tonight I feel like contending. We, we need to just, you know, fight and tell the devil you cannot win against my life in the name of Jesus. And then wherever you are, I want you to understand that God desires to bless you. It is his will and his purpose. Don't allow the devil lie to you and say, you know, God doesn't like you. He doesn't want to bless you. He's not interested in, in blessing your life. No, God is going to bless you. Contend for your future. Contend for that which you have been praying for. Don't let the devil steal from you again. In Jesus' name. Father, tonight I pray and I contend for my sisters and brothers that are listening to me. Everybody tuned in tonight in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for them, Lord. Everything the enemy has been trying to steal from them, to kill and destroy, I command thou devil, you will lose. You have no right. You have no authority. You have no power over the lives of the people of God. Whatever the devil is trying to put and, you know, bring into the lives of anybody or family members, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus tonight. And we declare by the power of God, the glory of God is going to shine over each one of us. We declare that every evil spirit, every evil devil, every spirit that has been sent and organized and assigned against your life, against your family, against your finances, against your spiritual life, against your health in the name of Jesus, against that desire in your heart, in the name of Jesus, I take authority and, the, you know, I rebuke them in Jesus' name and I speak right now a great breakthrough in your life. You know, the, the reason why I'm speaking all these things to you, I believe that God desires the best for you. And in Jesus' name, receive your miracle tonight. Receive your de deliverance in your life. Receive a supernatural intervention in your life. And may God intervene in your situation, in your family, in your finances, in your health, in the name of Jesus, in your life, from the crown of your head, be healed in Jesus' name to the, to the source of your feet. I rebuke that devil of infirmity that devil of evil, that devil of depression, that devil of discouragement, I rebuke you, that devil of fear, I rebuke you in Jesus' name, and everything that is sent by the enemy, I destroy it by the power of God. And I speak in deliverance and the healing and revival and first and in intervention from above. In Jesus' mighty name, I declare that before the end of this week, may you receive your miracle, may you testify of the goodness of the Lord, that by the next prayer line, may you come forth with a testimony that God intervened. That door that was closed, I command it to open in the name of Jesus Christ. That harassment from the enemy, I command it to cease from today in Jesus' name. Be glorified, our Father, because you've heard our prayer and you've answered it. Be glorified. We say thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and all people say amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. 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 We are blessed. We are blessed. Uh, thank you for teaching us tonight. Uh, you said you'll teach us three levels. We've gotten to two, so <laughs> we're going to expect the third level too. Uh, but before then, we are going to practice those two levels. We'll continue to grow in the grace of the Lord. And I believe that you have been blessed. We now know that we have power and authority. And we are supposed to exercise that power and wage war against the enemies. And we have been taught about the three levels. The territorial, the, the let me see, I was writing, rulers of the present darkness, spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. But above all, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Thank you all who have logged in tonight. I believe that you have been blessed. Thank you, Bishop Chacha. Uh, you have really blessed us tonight. You have really taught us. And we desire to hear more and more, even as we continue in prayer for the glory and honor of the Lord. I'm just going to open the lines once more. If there's anyone who has something to say before we say the final prayer, I'm going to open the lines and you can say something. God bless you. <laughs> 